Hi everyone, this is Bob with CellTechProductions.com with another audio tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a look at adding reverb to your tracks. So let's get started. <music> I'm working in Logic Pro today, but any DAW will work just fine. The concepts are the same. Before adding effects to anything, it's important for you to first analyze your source material. For example, if you're recording vocals in a bad sounding room, then you're going to be adding effects and trying to enhance a bad sounding room. I remember the first time I recorded with a good quality condenser mic and it picked up all the reflections in the room that I didn't even know I had. My dry mix really sounded bad and anything I did after that got worse. So that's not a great place to start. No amount of processing is going to fix a bad sounding recording. Most of us don't have great sounding rooms, so make sure you use some kind of sound treatment or other techniques to record your source as dry as possible. What I have pulled up here is my song, Queen of a Fool. We are going to add reverb to the vocal track. Now, there are several ways of going about this, including adding the reverb plugin directly on the track. Here's my vocal track. I could just come over here and reverb space designer and I can just add it right on here and mix it right on the track but we're not going to do that. Time-based effects like reverb and delay take a lot of computer processing power. Many times you'll want to use the same reverb on other tracks. If you're creating an ambient space for your guitar you may want the piano or the vocals to sound like they're in the same space. It's more efficient to share a single reverb by putting it on an aux track, and then you use the aux send to apply the effect. This way you can share one reverb with many tracks. Additionally, you'll have more control over your reverb on an aux track. Now, if you're not clear how aux sends and returns work, no worries, we'll cover what you need to know here, but you could also take a look at my video, Logic Pro X Signal Routing. I'll put a link in the description. This is the vocal track I want to add the reverb to. So I'm going down here where it says Send, and I'm going to go to Bus, and I'm going to select the next available bus, Bus 8. And then Logic automatically creates an aux track. So you see right next to it now, I see Bus 8, and I see down here it says Aux 10. The aux 10 doesn't matter. I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to rename that vocal verb. Now, when adding a send here in Logic, the default is post fader, which is normally what you want. Post fader means that I'm sending this level here. If I look at this level, I'm sending this post fader. So it's after this fader here. Now, think of this level here as a percentage. Let's just say this is 20% here. So I'm sending 20% of the signal on this track, splitting it out, and it's going to through bus 8 to this auxiliary track that I've labeled vocal verb. So now, because it's post fader, if I pull this fader down to remix this or fade it all the way out, for example, then I still have 20% going to the reverb. Conversely, if I change this to a pre-fader send, then I'm sending this signal out before it hits this fader. So it doesn't matter what I do with this fader, I'm still sending an absolute level like, let's say 10 dB here. So how do I know if this is pre-fader or post-fader? If the knob to control the send level is on the right side of this label, then it is post-fader. If I select it to pre-fader, notice what happens. It went to the left side. Okay, this is normally not what I want. There may be some applications for um, pre-fader sends, but normally that's not what I want. So I'm going to change this back to post-fader. So let's hear how that works. I'm going to go over here to uh, my aux track, and I'm going to select the Space Designer Reverb. And let's see, I'm going to select 
medium space, room, and I'm going to use this um, nice room here. And by the way, this 1.4, this is the reverb tail, basically. This is how large the uh, reverb is going to be. So this is the decay time, so to speak. It's 1.4 seconds. So I selected the nice room, and now I need to take the mix here, pull it all the way up. This is the amount of reverb. And this is the amount of dry. I'm going to pull it all the way down to zero. Let me show you how this post-fader and this pre-fader sin works. Right now, I have it set to post-fader. When I pull this fader down for the dry mix, that means that this level is going to follow it. So I'm still sending out a relative amount. So if I just say this is 20%, and if I pull this down to zero, 20% of zero is zero. So you'll see that happen here. You the queen. And I pull the fader down, and I have no level going out. If I change this to pre-fader, watch what happens when I pull the fader down now. You the queen. See how you still hear the reverb? That may be why you want to keep this at post-fader, because if you remix this, then the reverb send level is going to follow this fader. So in other words, if I'm sending 20% here, and if I pull this down here, still 20% of this is going out to the reverb. As we go along here, I'm going to point out some basic mistakes that most beginners make. The first is selecting a reverb type that is obviously unrealistic in your recording environment. If you are recording in your bedroom studio, it may not be appropriate to apply a big cathedral or hall reverb to your vocals, especially if you are sharing this in a video. Your visual will not match the audio. Try to make the ambience of your reverb believable. If your guitar sounds like it's in a big space and your vocal sounds like it's in a small room, well, you get my point of uh, being consistent. Now you can see I'm in the aux track here and I've selected the space designer and I put in a medium room uh, that doesn't have a lot of reverb tail. Let me tell you a little bit about space designer. It's a convolution reverb that comes stock with Logic. I don't want to get into a big discussion about convolution reverbs, but they provide a very cool way for you to record impulse responses, better known as IRs, to simulate any space. So Basically, you are sampling a space. For example, you could go down to your local church and record the IRs of the chapel and plug that file into your space designer, and you would have simulated that space at home. Pretty cool. I recorded the impulse response inside of a wooden cigar box one time, and I put it on my vocals. And um, it sounded like I was singing inside that cigar box. And by the way, it really sounded like crap. But <laughs> there's no need for you to collect IRs unless you're really ambitious and want to go on a mission about that. But Logic's already done the work for you. So many impulse responses are already sampled in the stock plugin. So I selected the space I want. I have this nice room at uh, 1.4 seconds. And I have a 100% wet on the reverb and no dry signal. And then I'll mix the appropriate amount of reverb in with the dry signal using this sin knob right here. So how should I go about mixing reverb anyway? You've heard many times you need to mix your tracks in context of the entire mix to make sure that they all play well together. And that's all true, but for the beginner, Here's where you may want to deviate a little bit. The biggest mistake I see most beginners making is adding too much reverb. Too much reverb can be a bad thing. It can add muddiness to your mix. Adding reverb typically sets your track further back in the mix. So what do you do? You add more, and then you add more until you end up with too much reverb. So for the beginner, I'm going to say if you are hearing the reverb in your mix, then you probably added too much. Let me give you an example here. I'm going to turn the send all the way down. Then let's mix this in the context of the mix. You'll see what I'm saying. You the queen of a That's the dry vocal right there. And now I'm going to start adding some reverb here. You the queen of a fool. And now I'm missing you. Queen of 
the floor. So that sounds pretty good to me. Now let me solo that. You the queen. That's a lot of reverb. You the queen of a fool. And the best way for you to check that is to start and stop your mix and then listen for that tail. That's the the end of the reverb that's decaying. You Okay, let me add a little bit more. You Now it's not a big reverb, but you can hear that tail and and you can hear that I have too much in there. You the So I'm going to turn it down. You the You You Okay, that sounds pretty good in solo. Let's test it in the context of the mix. So I'm listening for that reverb tail. You don't want the tail to go on forever or start running into subsequent passages that can get in the way. So it doesn't matter if it's a guitar, piano, vocals, whatever. It's easy to overdo reverbs. Now I'm speaking in general terms about reverb for natural, maybe organic sounding space and not about using it for effect. Now, let me show you a track where I did use that in this mix. I'm going down to my drums here. This little vinyl scratch here coincides with my snare hit. There's a lot of reverb put on there, and I was doing that for, for effect. Let me, let me just solo up this drum kit here. Let me take the reverb off of that. Let me just bypass it. So you can see what I'm doing there. I'm putting the reverb in for effect. Let me put those with the, um, with the rest of the drums. What I said earlier about sharing reverb is exactly what I did here. So if I go to, let me show you them. Yeah, this space designer right here. So it's this plate here, right? And if I look here, I think it's a large space. Yeah, large space plate, and it's 2.3 seconds. So if I go to my MIDI drums here, um, and there's my snare. So if I bypass it now, and then back on. My snare top and bottom on my, um, my live drums, I'll bypass them. That's the dry signal. Here's with the reverb on it. Put this in the mini snare in. So each track in your mix is going to be different and you'll need to use your creative judgment. But soloing is important, especially if you're new to mixing. Starting and stopping your mix often to listen to the reverb tail is important to get a feel for how much is too much. If in doubt, always use less. Now, one other thing we need to do is solo up the uh, reverb and see how it's affecting that vocal track in terms of EQ. Here's that space designer. I'm going to stick an EQ on there. I know you can go into the plugin itself and use some high pass filters and do some EQ there, but this is something that's familiar to me. It's easy enough to put on the aux track itself after the reverb so I can affect the EQ of the reverb. And EQ does not take up a lot of processing power, so I like using this. I'm going to turn the analyzer on. Tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to that vocal verb and I'm going to solo that up. So now I'm just listening to the reverb. The queen of a fool. Yeah, I'm missing you. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this low pass filter and I'm going to listen uh, around 200 and below, see what's going on. So you can hear that's pretty muddy, uh, especially right around 200 there. So, you get a lot of that. Um, so you can see, this is only on one track. You can see if you start adding a lot of reverb and you start piling up those low frequencies like that and it starts getting really muddy, you can mess up your mix in a big hurry with a lot of reverb. 
and especially if you don't do this right here. So I'm going to pull that out by using a high pass filter. Healing every burn, doors closed, no entry, passage of no return to the Really cleaned up my reverb track there. Let's see what that sounds like with the rest of the mix. You're the queen of a fool, and I'm missing you. So there you go, guys. Some tips for you when adding reverb to your mix. Please comment and subscribe. Go on over to celltechproductions.com and sign up for the email list, and I'll keep you posted on new content. Thank you.